Uh, let's go to another overachiever, Brad Tucker, astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU. Um, I'm sure you've got about 106 degrees, so that's why I'm putting you in that <laughs> category. Brad, let's, uh, let's begin our space chat, though. Yep. You, you like uh, alerting our viewers to some great free shows they can see up in the skies. This time we're talking about meteors and 15 to 20 an hour, which I guess that's quite a few for meteors, even though you have a sort of, what, three or four minute break in between each one? Yeah, it's one of those where it's actually predictable in, in terms of how much it's per you know producing. So normally you may see a shooting star or a meteor. You may get lucky and get one or two a night. On these meteor showers, and in this case, the Eta Aquariids, it regularly produces quite a bit. And as I said, they're 15 to 20, about per hour. So, you know, if you're out for a few hours in the morning and it's clear, uh, you can see, you know, hopefully quite a few. And it's all a bit about... Uh, dust and rock that have actually fallen off Halley's Comet. So it's a really cool thing. And because it's visible also everywhere in Australia, it means everyone gets enjoyed. It's not just you have to be at this one exact location at this one exact time. Everyone has a chance in the early morning skies to do it. Yeah, you can see a little bright light there, the International Space Station. So uh, I've always wondered what some of those lights are up in the air. It's good to slowly get educated, Brad. Um, so that's the, the good thing to see out of the sky. The bad thing, maybe, possibly, we've got a big rocket coming back to Earth. Uncontrolled is how this re-entry is being described. What's the danger then? Yeah, so this is the, the China's Long March 5B rocket. So this is, as you said, it's uncontrolled, which means that there's no thrusters. They can't plan when and where it comes down. So ultimately what happens is this rocket booster weighing, you know, over 20 tons is slowly going around the Earth. And as it goes around the Earth, the Earth's atmosphere drags it a little bit, slows it down. So it falls a little bit further and then slower and further and slower. And so at some point we do know it will re-enter. Now, in theory, what we like is controlled re-entry. So you kind of nosedive into the Earth and you land or really you splash down somewhere in the South Pacific Ocean. That's where most of these big pieces of debris go. In this case, it can essentially happen anywhere from plus 42 to minus 42 latitude. So like Copenhagen to south of Tasmania. So it's pretty much most of the inhabited world. And because of how fast this thing's traveling, it's currently about 30,000 kilometers an hour, and how much the atmosphere and the Earth changes, which creates that drag and slows it down, you really can't pinpoint until a few hours out where or roughly when it's going to come down. Uh, so, you know, it's a big uncertainty right now. The current window is suggesting that it will happen around 1.40, 1.45 p.m. Sunday our time, but it could be as early as right. 8, or it could be as early as 8 p.m., on the 8th or 5 a.m. on Sunday. So every day we narrow down that window, and as we narrow down the window, we know where it's going to re-enter, but until we get closer, we're not going to know. So once they know, so once it's a few hours out, what's the precision they have then? I mean, would they say, here's a five-kilometre patch in Hobart, if you live there, get out of there, or would it be broadly Tasmania? And I mean, what do you do then if you don't know where it's going in that huge area? <laughs> Yeah, so, so we'll, we have these strips because of the orbit. And actually, as we are seeing the International Space Station flying over, you kind of know maybe about 100 or 200 kilometers either side of its path. So you'll know the strip going across the Earth. And it's like, well, it's either, you know, for five minutes uh, here, as you said, over, uh, you know, central Tasmania or in the ocean. And even still, that's uncertain. You know, and all of this, because of the uncertainty, because of our lack of being able to model the detail way the atmosphere drags or slows these things down and how this thing is uncontrolled is exactly why we don't like this because it's you, you can't say, all right, well, Tasmania, mm. you only look at look out for these exact two minutes. You know, it's say it will head over you for these two minutes, but maybe it starts burning up five minutes later and therefore another part right. has to worry. So, and, yeah. So are we going to stop doing these uncontrolled ones then? What, what's happening? A bit of regulation needed? Well, yeah, and, and there, there is. There is laws that say, you know, it's essentially the country that puts it up that's responsible, and it is China's fault. Uh, you know, and a lot of groups already don't do this. You know, what these rocket boosters actually do, and we see this with SpaceX, is they actually don't go all the way into space. They do most of the heavy lifting and then splash out in the ocean. Then a smaller bit goes into Earth or outside of Earth, right. rather, into the Earth's atmosphere and burns back down. And so really they need to change their design and there needs to be more pressure. And the US and Russia and other groups are saying, look, you can't keep doing this. They had this similar situation where a bit of another rocket 
fell in the Ivory Coast. They're planning on launching more of these rockets up to taking other parts of the space station, their space station. So this isn't going to be a one-off cause. They just need to fundamentally redesign their rocket, and that has right. to come from the international community. As usual, I feel a bit more educated and a little bit afraid at the end of our segments. Brad Tucker, talk next week. Anytime.